Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own substrate. Now a good reason why you want to make your own substrate instead of buying Eco Earth or like Coconut Core or substrate you see at like a pet store is the price. And that's why I make my own substrate. is solely the price of how much it would cost because I have tons of tanks literally all over the place throughout my house. And to get this much substrate, yeah, this is like compacted, you put in a thing into a lot of substrate, but to get as much as I need, it would probably cost me hundreds of dollars just to fill up my entire tanks. But I'm gonna show you how I fill up all these tanks with just like $28. And one thing I will say about my soil that I make is that it's also great for bioactive enclosures like this one right here. Is my bioactive enclosure growing great? That's my soil I have right there. Another bioactive enclosure I have growing great and I'm making my leopard geckos. Now I know there's only pothos in here. I finally got a succulent growing up in there. It's going crazy right now. He's getting really tall. I didn't expect him to get so tall. I thought it was going to be a short guy and started going crazy. But yes, this soil is great for bioactive enclosures. It will help grow um, plants. One thing I noticed with Eco Earth and other stuff is it does not, it dries out way too quickly. And for me, I can never grow plants with Eco Earth. And you know, obviously you have to mix other stuff as well. But Eco Earth for me just dries out way too easy. I, I need like this, for instance, this is a Crescent Gecko enclosure. I need it to be moist. This is an anole enclosure. I need it to hold humidity. And that's what these do. So I'm gonna teach you how to make a tropical substrate and a desert substrate. And all you're gonna need is peat moss, play sand, organic topsoil and sphagnum moss. If you're using the desert, all you need is the peat moss, the play sand, and the topsoil. All the materials will cost less than $30. And I will say this, I need to warn you, if you only have like one tank or something like that, uh, you're gonna have a lot of leftover dirt because these are bales of stuff. Like the play sand is like $4 for a 50 pound bag and the peat moss is like it's a huge 50 pound bag as well, but it's compact, just like Eco Earth. So it's just like gigantic and dude, it goes a long way. So if you have like a 10 gallon tank, then <laughs> you're gonna have a lot of leftover dirt. So let me show you how I mix it up. So what I do first is I take out the peat moss and I put it in like a little bucket, as you can see right here. I also put the place in in a bucket as well. I just empty the whole bag. If a uh, whole bag will fit inside of a five gallon bucket, then I'm gonna get a gallon of water. Honestly, I pretty much used a whole gallon of water in this video. I showed you how much I used there, but I, I used the whole gallon. And I pour it inside of the peat moss so that way it stays real nice and moist because it's very dry when it first comes out. A lot of times I do not know the ratio of sand in my tropical setup. I eyeball it and I have I don't know how to describe it more than like it's just I know what I have. I can't give you like a 50-50 ratio or anything like that. But I filmed it and this is to me is a very good mix. So this is what I this is what I mix. I can't really tell you exact measurements, but if you look at this video, maybe you can do something very similar. Now here is some sphagnum moss. I actually have it mixed with some green moss. But this is the sphagnum moss, as you can tell, and I am going to mix it in this right here. This is the fully, you know, ready to go uh, stuff I have. This is what I use for my tropical stuff. I also use this for my um, tarantulas as well. Now, I will say you don't have to put the green moss in here, but I, for some reason, have been uh, putting green moss in mine as well. I don't know why. I just started to do it. I just kind of was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to mix them together, kind of make it a nice little tone. Now you can also throw some leaves in here for um, isopods and springtails and stuff like that. I like to mix in the little leaves. I actually put my uh, leaves in a bag and I crush it up so that way it's kind of, you know, good. Now you can get your leaves from outside. Just make sure, you know, you're not putting some poisonous leaves in there and all that. You can look that up on Google. I don't know which state or where you're from where, you know, leaves might be like crazy. Like cedar, obviously, you know, you, you wouldn't do that anyways. I feel like that would just look terrible. So, but yeah, you know, obviously don't do cedar or any of those type of trees. But yeah, so I just get this and I mix it up. I might need a little bit more leaves because I feel like it's not kind of coming together as well as I want. But yeah, so this is it though. This is the final product for Bioactive. This is what I use for Bioactive. And it does wonders. Everything I have is breeding like crazy. All my plants are doing great. All my isopods are breeding. I'm, I really like this. This is my final mix. It might change in the future, but for now, to me, this is a perfect mix of substrate. So this is my tropical substrate. Let's go ahead and get into the desert substrate, shall we? Also forgot to mention, very important for the uh, leaves, if you do source your leaves from outside, make sure they're not sprayed with like some kind of like ant spray or insect spray to keep ants away. If you live kind of like near apartments or something like that, I do not I'm, make sure that my stuff is okay. So just like I said, that's why I said the poisonous part, you know, some trees are a little harmful to the lizards and stuff like that. So you just got just do some research. There's tons of trees, so I can't give you like a complete 
list and if you don't feel like that you could buy them on buy leaves online and stuff like that but yeah I just get mine from outside to make my desert substrate it's very simple all I do is I use a 33 33 33 mix of peat moss, sand, and topsoil. Now I use Scott's organic topsoil and it's worked great for a long time for me. However, I will say that with everything, even though it's organic, humans have found their way into everything. And you might, I've found some plastic in my uh, bag of organic topsoil. I found like a bottle cap one time from a Coke. It's that sort of stuff. So if you do see that, don't worry. It's still gonna be fine. It's just that humans have desecrated the earth. And when you're done, this is what it's gonna look like. It tells there's some sands coming up off the ground over there. But this is mine. This is from our little red Saharan. And it's very sandy, but for some reason, obviously the sand's going to fall through. But the top still stays on top and on the bottom. And I mean, as you can tell over there, it does sand does come up to the top. But mostly the sand goes to the bottom, and the other stuff is kind of like mixed in. And they like to dig in this and everything like that. But I, I honestly, I put a little too much topsoil in this, but that's fine. So that's how I make my substrate. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was helpful. I will see you next time.